Now he's down for the road. Good morning, people. It's Tuesday. Owing to the fact that yesterday I got involved in lots of uh, new plastic kennel deliveries and shifting and uh, trying to get some kerosene out of Keith's tank. So this is where we are. Filter. Can you see? Can you see the lights through that? It's it's clean at last. That's taken. I took it out, soaked it in diesel. That got some of it out. And then I tried some of my engine degreaser, which is water soluble stuff, and that did a really good job. But to finish it off, I've used petrol. Right, and it's now what you can say it's you can see the little marks in there, but it is clean. Right, it is clean. So I'm happy with that now. God it was gunked up. Uh, it was even even little little brown bits actually blocking the holes that had to be wire brushed out. That's how bad it was. So, I've since talking to the last, I've found out that you have to flush the gearbox with kerosene. But I've also watched a couple of videos which shows that if you take the gear stick out, these four bolts, you're into the other end of this gear casing because the dipstick for this gear casing is actually there. Right, so I can take this out now and that just lifts off and then I can get a nozzle into there and blow compressed air and kerosene into this gearbox and flush it out because it's absolutely full of crap and I can also get my little uh, camera on a stick, my little remote access camera into there to have a look to see how clean it's coming but it looks to me as I've said before they've been using old engine oil in this and it's absolutely filthy I mean these back ends are supposed to be bulletproof and various people say you can run them on anything you can put anything in them but it clogs the bloody filters up and apparently you do have to be careful because it must it must be mineral oil that you put in them you mustn't use synthetics or 30 high spin or whatever because if you use synthetic oils in them it uh, ruins the seals in the hydraulics to swell up I think and your hydraulics stop working properly. Likewise with the gearbox uh, and the engine. The engine requires straight 40 uh, mineral oil, no fancy additives, no diesel additives etc etc. Uh, the gearbox requires straight 90 uh, gear oil, but none of not EP90 because EP90 has got additives in it, and the additives attack phosphor bronze brushes, so you can't use that in it either. And uh, I think the most expensive part of this rebuild is going to be the oil because there's going to be there's going to be uh, somewhere north of 250 quid's worth of oil in this by the time I've finished. Because of course you can't buy it in exact quantities, uh, so that's going to need that needs. I think that needs 12 pints or something, a uh, gallon and a half. So that's going to I'm going to probably get a five gallon of that. That needs more than a five gallon. This needs more than two five gallons. Right, I think there's. Uh, oh, I can't remember the capacities now. I've done it again, haven't I? Talk myself into a bloody corner. I was going to look those capacities up and tell you. Let's look at. Let's look them up. Let's look the capacities up. I have the magic book of words here. I'll tell you what. I'll find them all and bring you back. Bye now. Right, folks. The engine sump takes 6.8 liters plus 1.136 liters for for the filter. That's 12 pints plus 2 pints for the filter. The gearbox takes 4.5 imperial gallons, uh, 20 litres with PTO or 4 and a quarter without PTO. Well, I've got a PTO, so uh, that's 20.43 litres. And the rear axle 
takes 9 gallons or 40.9 litres right of straight 30 uh, so that's that's the biggest oil capacity by 9 gallons 40 litres so as you can tell this uh, about the cheapest you can get that one is about £1.45 per litre so there's going to be there's going to be some money's worth of oil but there you go once fitted let's hope it won't leak out right there we go I'm now going to put the little tractor outside have a clean up from there and take the gear stick off and just stick my little camera inside it and see what I can see I hate to think it's going to look like it because that oil and sludge that came out let's just hope it had all settled to the bottom shall we all right bring you back when I'm doing it bye now new toys people this was part of the reason that I didn't get here till uh, till late yesterday morning when I got here Keith was waiting for me and Gary arrived and, and I got completely blagged for the day very nice Avo 8 Mark 2 Avo 8 Mark 2 uh, in its original case with some test leads but not original test leads two new batteries good working order 20 quid thank you very much right these are beautiful meters beautiful test meters I know I've already got one now I've got another one right I couldn't resist it at the price I couldn't resist it there you go they, they, they normally sell for 40 quid 45 quid plus on eBay and uh, you've no guarantee of them being working when you get them or being accurate whereas I've been able to check this one over and it's good next new toy a US Pro set of uh, UNF and UNC taps and dies I need the UNC because that's covered in UNC bolts right uh, also UNF but UNF I've already got in that big set they're all UNF well this unfortunately is a UNF and UNC set right so I've sort of duplicated but I couldn't find a set that was just UNC apart from uh, a British made one which looked absolutely beautiful which was UNC only up to one inch and was 800 quid so I don't go for that sort of price and I'm afraid I can't simply can't afford it so I've taking a risk with this one this one was 80 quid well you can buy UNC sets at 20 quid right but my estimation is they can't be any good and the real judge as far as I'm concerned is does it have split dies in it if it doesn't have split dies in it they usually just tungsten steel and they're all right you can cut a thread with them but you mustn't you you know you can cut threads on on soft metals you can cut threads on mild steel but anything much above that and they start to they start to go very blunt indeed this has got split dies which is the reason I got it I say it was, it was 89 quid I think it's I thought it was a reasonably priced set so I'll let you know if it's any good uh, they, this is from eBay from a, a seller in Consit County Durham and uh, I always believe in giving that part of the part of the world as much support as it can get because by god it needs it up there it does need you know the finance industry bringing back so there you go right i shall have a play with this later on because i have all these threads to clean out on this which are unc and i've also got the threads in the back axle to clean out where the safety frame bolts onto the back axle uh, and i've also got loads of other threads to clean because everything you touch is is really rusty and hasn't seen an oil can for years right I shall now crack on bye now people good afternoon it's still Tuesday and there is a big space where the tractor was because the tractor has gone up to Keith's it got as far as the gateway in through the gateway and halfway up the slope and then it got stuck and then it ran out of petrol because it was on a really steep slope and when we put the more petrol in it, the battery had gone flat. So, it's tarped down and waiting for tomorrow. We're going to take an extra battery up to make sure it starts tomorrow and get it up the rest of the way. But we've made, we've advanced the tech level. I also have some kerosene, 
a big can of kerosene for washing the gearbox out on the big tractor and now I'm going to get my camera going and have a look inside the transmission of the big tractor and see how utterly disgusting it is. So when I've got that all set up I'll bring you back. Bye now. Can you see this people? That's inside the back end. That's supposed to be red painted. Well it will be red painted and clean. I didn't move it about too much because if I dip it in the oil you'll instantly see nothing. But it's as black as black as black. Look at that. Oh my god what a state. So what to do? Well tomorrow first thing I have to get the little red tractor going again and uh, and get it up onto the field so we can cut grass again. Because in two weeks time, or less than two weeks time, it's the Wicani Jamboree. And all the grass needs to be neat. My god it's sick and gloopy is that. So that'll take up a bit of tomorrow. And then I'm gonna get some I'll take that out now before I get it covered in oil. Too late. I'm gonna get some Kero which I've got over there in that can and I'm going to probably put the bottom plate back on and I might just I might just empty that oil can out that oil tank out rig up some sort of hessian filter over it or something like that get the one of my pressure washers uh, not pressure washers air pressure sprays and start to spray Kero in there and in the gearbox end as well, in the gear stick end, because I've got the gear stick off there. And uh, we can wash it from both ends. And I'll see how it goes because we've got nothing to lose. Uh, we've got nothing to lose at all. But if not, if we can't get it clean doing that, the thing to do is to take the top off the gearbox. Uh, which is just a ring of bolts all the way around and then an oil pipe that needs lining up uh, and then I can just get inside it and uh, and hose, hose, hose it out with kerosene and get all the shit out the bottom I mean we might be able to make a reasonable job from from here if I take this take this plate off here that'll give us more access uh, but I don't know it looks absolutely filthy in there it looks like the whole inside of the casting is covered in sludge. You won't. I don't think you'll see much. In. I'll take this plate. I'll take this plate off now, and uh, we'll just have a look inside. I'll be back in a minute. Oh dear! Oh dear! Look at the state of this. Look at the state of this. Look at the state of that. Let me just get you. Let me just get you a crash bang. Let me just get. Her get the little light then you will be able to see then you will be able to see how chronically chronically scummy it is look at the state of that look at the state of that and yet it works oh it worked of a fashion but look at the filth in there my god We're going to have to take this top off, aren't we? We're going to have to take this top off. Let me just... Hang on a minute. Hang on. Hang fire. I'm going to look at the ceiling. While I get this on my... I'll get this on my head. Right, back from the ceiling. Back into there. My God, what is that? Look at the state of that. That's just layers of of black. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. Oh. Kara's not going to get this off, is it? 
Oh dear. I mean, you know, what the hell? They've been lighting fires on these the gearbox or something. That looks like it's been. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. See, this is where you put the oil in. Ah, oh, good God. I wonder if I can see, I wonder if we can see down to the bottom of the gearbox from the other side, down the gear stick hole. I'm going to have to take the cover off and have a look. It's only a ring of bolts and one oil pipe. It's not hugely complex. I'm going to need to use the, take the seat off and use the chain lift to lift it off. But let's just see if we can see anything down here. Well, it looks... It looks black, but not as bad as that bit up there. Oh, bloody hell. And I was hoping for a quick job here. Never mind. What we have to do, we have to do. Yeah, that thick, gungy crap on there. You can see that on the side of that casting there. I'm trying. I'm very trying. As you know. No, there we go. It's full of crap. So, this ring of bolts around here comes off. There's a pipe that goes to the hydraulic pump. Uh, and so, while we're on, if I'm taking this lid off, I'm going to buy the hydraulic seal kit and I'm going to replace all the seals in it because the hydraulic seal kit is like 20 quid for the lot, you know, including VAT, and it's just not worthwhile not doing it. And besides, it would be a good experience for me. It might make me turn into a a competent hydraulic mechanic again. <laughs> right folks, it's it's quarter to five, uh, it's Tuesday, it's been a bad day at Black Rock, which is a cracking good film, and I'm going to pack up and go home now. So I'll see you all later. Bye now. Poor little tractor. Good morning folks. It's Wednesday. Please excuse the noise of the traffic going past. It's Wednesday and I am just beginning to start to remove the top cover off this uh, rear transmission and hydraulic setup on the Fordson Major E1A. Now, the first thing I did to have a look was to take this gear stick out thinking that I could spray cleaner into there and... and get it clean but when I took the back cover off just round there I realised I wasn't going to do it because it's really black and thick and stuck on so I'm going to take the top off and I'm going to replace all the hydraulic seals I'm going to put it back together again now the first thing I did was have a look on the internet on YouTube to see if I could find somebody that had done one and whilst there are bits of it being done in various places there doesn't seem to be a complete strip down and rebuild of uh, a Fordson Major hydraulic setup and, and rear transmission gearbox. I'm not going to strip the gearbox. I'm saying I'm not going to strip the gearbox. I don't intend to strip the gearbox if I can get away with it. I intend to get this top off, clean it all out thoroughly, replace the uh, all the rubber o-rings in the whole system, clean it all out, and rebuild it. Right. I am no expert. I have never done this before on a tractor. So I am learning as I go and I am documenting what I do. 
So please don't take it that I'm an expert and I know what I'm doing. I'm just learning as I go. I've got a manual. Uh, I've got YouTube, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wing it and hope I can get away with it. Right. The first thing I've done is take the seat off. Four bolts. Here's a piece of advice for you. Put all your bolts back in the holes. Don't bung them all in a tin to get lost. Put them back in the holes. Don't do what I did and drop one of them in the gearbox. Luckily, I got my magnet in and fished it out again. Right. Next thing to do is to clean off all around the mating surface where it's going to separate and get all the muck out and get it as clean as you can because you don't want any more muck or anything else falling into the bottom of the gearbox and disappearing so the next process is get it clean now I've taken off this back cover and as I showed you yesterday inside this gearbox is anything but clean so what I'm going to do next is take these bolts out, clean all the loose paint off, clean all the muck off and then I'm going to clean out these two holes in the top of the gearbox which I presume are for the lifting uh, eyes which uh, Fordson talk about. Now, I don't know whether to remove this piece at the front first which has got the piston and silver in it or whether just to lift the whole thing off. I shall look in the book and see what it suggests. Right, but in the meantime, I'm just going to be cleaning. And uh, Keith will be coming down for me shortly to pick me up. Uh, and we're going to see if we can get the recalcitrant 2CB tractor started again and get it up the rest of the hill, which I'm sure we will be able to. Uh, but it failed yesterday and it was for... It, it, it ran out of, because we're on such a steep slope, it ran out of fuel. And by the time we put new fuel in it and tried to start it again, the battery went. So, we've charged the battery overnight. I'm taking an extra battery with jump leads up there. And we're going to have a go at getting it going and getting it up the rest of the hill. Once it's on the flat, it'll be fine. But that hill is a killer. I'll take the camera with me and show you what's going on. So, there you go. Right, first job, get it clean. Get it clean all round and as far as you can. And then I'll bring you back when I'm doing the next next stage. Okay, bye now. So folks, here we are. And under the red sheet is the red tractor, which started immediately. We put the battery, freshly charged battery on it. Started immediately and drove straight up the hill without any problem at all. And then this happened. So the grass ain't going to get cut today after all. So never mind. But at least we've got it up here and it's safe now. Right? And here's, here's Angela the wet coming down the field. <laughs> right. Okay, I'm just come, I've just come to pick some stuff up. And I'm going to go back to the tractor and carry on. Back to the Fords and that is. Bye now. Right people. Four o'clock. I've had a shift round and moved the topper in. I've got the tractor centred up over the uh, girder. You can see here that it would be much easier to do this with an engine crane. But because of this girder I haven't got one and also because the engine crane I used to have was lent to me and he borrowed it back so there you go. Uh, but there we are, we're centred up over the, uh, the hydraulic uh, cylinder assembly. And I'm just going to get all these bolts out, the rest well, I've got most of the bolts loose. Get the rest of the bolts loosened off and get ready to lift it. According to the uh, according to the book of words you can take it all off as one assembly, there's no need to take the piston out first. Uh, so what I'm going to probably do is either make a bracket to go onto there to lift it with or I'm going to put a web strap under there, out there and then over my hook and then under here and back onto my hook again and that should lift it superbly well. I'm going to have the uh, the cooler lift here ready to put it on or I may even actually, I think I'll use that one, I'll bring that round the back, take it straight across and onto that and then I can leave it on there, to, I can work on it on there, I can bring this round here and I've got just enough room to use the lift to turn it over. 
so that's what I'll do. I've just uh, had the jack underneath jiggling it across a bit so that I can get it square under the chain but there you go. Right that's what I'm going to crack on with now I've got the wire brush out to clean the rest of the muck off and uh, in a bit we're going to be nice and clean and ready for a lift so I may get to that today I may get to it tomorrow morning so I'll bring you back if I do. Bye now. Works better if you take the lens cap off. Right folks the party's over I've got a nice webbing strap around it and I've put some lift on it and it's not budged so given it's probably been on there since 1955 uh, I'm not going to leave it under tension overnight which I probably could, I will do, I will do. I'll just put a bit of tension on it and leave it overnight like that that's it I'll just leave it at that overnight and see if it shifts right see if it comes loose uh, I've tapped a scraper and a thin scraper in at various places and it does go in and it does appear to be letting go but uh, I'm not going to rush it tonight because it's something that wants to take in steady a bit at a time so basically what we've done is we've cleaned it all down we've taken the covers off, we've blown all the muck out, we've scraped all the paint out from around the edge we've loosened all the bolts all the way around and now we're ready to lift it off so, until tomorrow, I'll see you all then. Bye now. Good morning, people. It's part two of the hydraulics. And I left it overnight with a bit of tension on it, just to pull it, and it's, it's moving. I've been tapping this in all the way around and you can see that it's, uh, it's come up quite a bit it's stuck at the front there's a peg there right now I've, I've just been in there and tapping that peg and I think that's coming off Oops. so what I'm going to do is go around gently tapping that in now you see it's lifting there as well that's going there so I think we're nearly there I think we're nearly off so I'm just going to continue tapping around the joint and uh, give it a wiggle until it comes free. Gently, gently catchy monkey. Bye now. Right folks, it was stuck on this peg here, which if you look at it, it's probably it's exposed, it gets all the rain and the muck on there, but it was stuck on the peg. So what I did was shifted the lift from the centre to the front and then jiggled it sideways at the back and it's just popped out so I think we're ready for a lift now so I'm going to set up the uh, put the lift back to the centre again and then I'm going to get the hydraulic trolley cleared off put that round the back and we'll lift it off and we'll boot it straight onto the hydraulic trolley so when I get that set up to do I'll bring you back okay Bye now. Ah, just a minute. I have to go up to Keith's now and uh, give him instructions on the new mower and give it a test around the field. So I'll leave the hydraulics for now and I'll take you up there. I think. Was that him arriving? No, it wasn't. Right, okay. I'll bring you back in a minute. Either here or at the field. Bye now. Double cock up, double cock up. The pipe, which is the feed between the pump and the valve chest, has stayed in and it won't come out, but it will in a minute, because I shall get it out. And the second cock up is that I've actually managed to loop this round here but I can just, I can just whip that out like that. That's that one sorted. Right, now I need to get the, I need to pull that pipe out in order that I can slide this across and the pipe is loose and it is turning but I'm just a bit reticent to put my hand under there uh, I'm going to put a wood block under it as well and get the pipe out and then we're across now look at that, isn't that fantastic what a valve, what a I'll just rest that on the edge of there, yes that's on the edge what a hydraulic platform is that that has got me out of so many sticky situations Right, I shall get the pipe out and I'll bring you back again. Right, there's a better shot of the pipe. Now the pipe pushes in both ends 
with just an o-ring seal uh, but I, it needs to come out for that to go over there so I'm going to get it out now right bring you back when it's out and it's on the safely on the hydraulic platform bye now